the issue is not whether Joe Bi- what Joe Biden did. Uh, no, the is issue, is, the issue, issue is equal why treatment is it, under the law. That's the issue. No, the equal issue is treatment under the law. You do not seem to ever see the same conspiratorial problems when it's a Republican. Those were all investigated for f- four years and they continue By the way, to do it. Their Durham investigation investigated <laughs> everything you're trying to investigate and came up with nothing. Do you not trust Bill Barr and, and Mr. Durham? The Mueller investigation, uh, we had two and a half years of this, and they were going to find Russian collusion. And guess what? They can't. Even though Adam Schiff told us, Adam Schiff told us that the Durham investigation did not come up with any. They investigated all this, all these concerns that you had about the FBI, about made up snitches, all these things. They didn't find anything. Why is it that you want to reinvestigate it? They found that Kevin Kleinsmith altered documents and he pled guilty to it. That's fine. When you got someone with the FBI altering documents in front of the FISA court, that's not finding anything. (laughs) That's pretty important, Chuck. And that's what we're looking for. They did not find what you are claiming that is out there. Why couldn't Durham find it? The the Durham investigation is not done. The Mueller investigation is done. What did he conclude? No collusion, no conspiracy, no coordination. That was Ohio Republican Jim Jordan sparring with NBC News' Meet the Press, uh, Chuck Todd, host of that show. Uh, So I thought that was a very interesting exchange. Um, I also read a great piece in the Columbia Journalism Review yesterday about Russiagate and how it was covered um, in the press. I I actually did my radar yesterday, I believe. It's crazy how all the days (laughs) run together. What day is today? What is Tuesday? (laughs) Yesterday, I talked with Batya about uh, the the latest Twitter files drop, which was last week, Matt Taibbi uh, revealing that this um, infamous list of 600 Russian bot accounts that were having some huge influence on the discourse that was put forth by this alliance securing democracy. Um, it was all, it was fake. These were real people, they were Americans, not bots, participating in political dialogue. And, uh, and, and then the interesting thing there was that Twitter, Yoel Roth found out, he reverse engineered the list, because it was a private list, to find out that they were not, that they were authentic accounts. And he wanted to go nuclear, go to war with this group. Mm-hmm. And other people at Twitter talked to him to, because, because the Russian paranoia in the media was so pervasive, they were like, we can't even, we can't appear to even quarrel with this group. Wait, Isn't I'm sorry. Nuts? The, the, you'll, the, these were a group of people who were real and not Russian. Yes. Yoel Roth wanted to go nuclear against them in what way? No, a nuclear against the group that was claiming, that, that, they they claiming that there are 600 I, I bots on Twitter and that everything that happens, everything anyone says nice about a conservative or Trump is actually a Russian bot, uh, a beloved story by the media. And uh, Matt right, Taibbi you're, has, you're turning into a, kind of a Yoel Roth fanboy over here. I am. Right? I, well, he was, he was uh, he, I, my impression has really changed after that initial uh, Twitter files release. Anyway, so these are all vaguely related things about how the Russia collusion narrative crystallized and was just so, was was pushed by bad faith actors, Mm -hmm. pushed by liars, Mm -hmm. and swallowed up by the media and embraced by them. So in this chip, a clip with Chuck Todd and Jim Jordan, it, it... it seems to me Chuck Todd is continuing to say that, you know, there's some kind of there there with respect to the various yeah, Russia investigations. But Jim Jordan is also saying, well, I want there to be an investigation that, from my kind of political perspective, mm-hmm. investigation into um, Joe Biden, et cetera, et cetera. And there's like this weird battle of whose FBI's investigations we, sh- we should trust, whose should be, you know, mm-hmm. uh, considered to be meritorious, whether or not it's worth doing continued digging. And I wonder what the public reaction is to these kind of dueling and investigations. How much of this is going not going over the, the the heads of the American people, but it's just not that interesting. Well, anymore. but, but is it, one is an investigation. One was an investigation of something that, right, Trump being influenced by Russia that again, turned out to have no there there. The other is an investigation of the investigators and why they did that. I mean, sure. I I guess my concern is that Chuck Todd responds and says, you seem to have a lack of trust in the integrity of the people that are conducting the investigations, but you are happy to cite that cite those investigations for having cleared Donald Trump's name. Is there is there hypocrisy there? You're you're you do you, mm-hmm. I, that, I feel like I that's the argument that, that yeah. Chuck Todd is making. Well, I be, because I bet in his heart of hearts he doesn't believe or hasn't admitted that there was no basis to the whole to the whole Russia influence thing, or that it was I maybe mean, there was kernels of truth to it, but the it was so it was exaggerated beyond any recognition of of resembling an actual fact pattern. They they and other outlets cited this this group over and over again that that again had a made up list of of 
accounts that were not Russian and were not bots. And and brought that up every time something happened, some some political conversation. Look how look how Twitter is polluting the discourse by allowing Russia to have this outsized influence. That just wasn't. There's no basis to it. It's not true. It's not true. Yeah. And there's been and there's been no reckoning. Uh, very little reckoning within the media about that. There's been a reckoning outside the media. Conservative media has covered it. Independent people like Matt Taibbi, like us on our show, it, Glenn Greenwald. There's no shortage of people covering it, to be clear. But there's been no reckoning within the media itself. And, and I, I think they, I think some of them still believe it to be true, or they're just ignoring oh, it. Oh, people absolutely do. Um, I mean, I was. I recently did a debate with a prominent Twitch streamer who I had to sidestep his repeated re references to Russiagate um, and, and Trump collusion because it was derailing our it would have derailed our conversation. But m many people continue to hold that as gospel, and it's very much motivating the people's opinions about. Ukraine is motivating people's opinions about Donald Trump and, and domestic politics. And it's, it's, it's frustrating because I do think that there is a way in which it's still relevant, and that's the way it's being kind of digested in the Twitter files. That is to say, there are media empires that can't be trusted. There is collusion between big tech and the government in a way that is very disruptive and anti-democratic. Those are stories that I think there's a lot of public interest in. This back and forth in that Meet the Press exchange, I think is probably why shows like Meet the Press, cable news generally speaking, isn't getting the numbers that it used to. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is, it's remarkable to me that that narrative still endures. They spent, that this Russian troll farm spent a very small amount of money on some small level of fake posts and fake accounts that were seen by very few people that were not targeted despite the whole Cambridge Analytica thing that is, is just, again, a, a not true story. They were not directly targeted at swing voters or anyone. It, it had no political, there's, there's no way, if you're trying to quantify its effect, you would have to put it next to the gazillion dollars actually spent by the campaigns and, and, and free advocacy done by their surrogates on cable news and in talk radio and in newspapers and say that all of that influence was somehow dwarfed by a tiny, tiny number of accounts and money spent. It's ridiculous. It's transparently ridiculous. And, and the media has not reckoned with that. Yeah, look, I'm still waiting for the investigation into uh, the K-Hive bots, the Brock right. bots. Right. I mean, have they found these alleged Bernie bro bots yet? Or are they disappointed to find that those are just real people who believed in something as well? <laughs> <laughs> right. They, and then the narrative was that those were Russians, too. Right. Russia was trying to help Bernie and it was trying to help Trump. Uh, just not liking Clinton or something, it's not, it's not true. Yeah, we're all, we're all Russian now. I was joking uh, during break that we should get t-shirts made up where everyone just says Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia. Jan Brady's got face Jan on, Brady it. on it. <laughs> right. I'll okay. buy you one for your birthday, Brianna. Oh, I cannot wait. Um, you, yours too, we're just a week apart. <laughs> we'll have matching, we'll match we can it. wear our matching Jan Brady <laughs> shirts on the show? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, more rising after this.